I want you to stop using Word to format your books and novels. Stop fighting the words in your page and find the best results preparing your cherished text for self-publishing. Today I'll show you how fast you can format any manuscript once you master the tools I'm going to present. It's not the easiest way, but you will love the results. I'll guide you step by step on how to turn a manuscript into a beautifully formatted masterpiece using Overleaf. This is the plan. The first step is selecting the book will be typesetting. Today, I've chosen Peter Pan, which is in the public domain and available on the Project Gutenberg site. This will act as our manuscript. Now that we have our manuscript in hand, let's set up our project in Overleaf. First I'll log in, and then select New Project. Type some name here, and we are ready. Now to the setup. Usually in other software, you will probably do a bunch of clicks to define the size and the type of the document. Here, we just type these comments below backslash document class between square brackets 12 pt which is going to be the size of the font we are going to use and between curly brackets book then backslash use package between square brackets paper size equals 6 inch and 9 inch 6 by 9 and we close the square brackets and at the end we add between curly brackets geometry. Stick with me, you are going to do this just once. The next two comments will be backslash use package square brackets English close square brackets and between curly brackets babble. And the next one use package between curly brackets microtype these two comments will define the English as our main language of our document and we are going to use the package called Microtype. The Microtype package will help us to do a better spacing of the letters and characters in our line. I hope you are still with me. It may seem complicated at first, but you don't need to memorize all the comments I'm showing you. Once you type it in your document, you can reuse it for many different books you want. Once you do this, the next part is to define where we are pasting the text. You type backslash begin document and backslash end document. Whatever you type between this begin and end comments is what will become the final document. Let's do a small test here. I'll type whatever I type in here will become my document and hit recompile which will generate the document just defined you see not bad at all the first time i tried this i felt like a computer wizard okay now the fun part begins i'm gonna copy the first chapter of my manuscript and paste it directly inside the begin and end document comments so here on the project gutenberg i'm gonna copy and then paste in here. Let me hit recompile and see what happens. Wow, that looks good. Since I know this is a chapter, let's make it a chapter. Just type backslash chapter and between curly brackets, Peter breaks through. Close curly brackets. Let me recompile again, and boom! There you have it, your first chapter. There's still some fine tuning here and there we are going to take care of. The first I see right away is the line spacing. In Word, or other software, you will probably do some clicks here and there to fix it. In here, the only thing we need to do is to add this comment before the begin document comment. 
backslash renew command, open curly brackets, backslash baseline stretch, close curly brackets, open curly brackets again, 1.3, and close it. Hit recompile, and there you have your new line spacing defined throughout the document. Cool, isn't it? Now let's add some flair. I've always loved those big initials or drop caps in the beginning of the chapters. Let's add some here. First you type the following comment, backslash use package, open curly brackets, type latrine, and close. Then a new comment, backslash use package, open curly brackets, fix dash cm and close curly brackets. If you recompile it now, nothing's gonna happen. We haven't used the comment yet. Let's go to the beginning of our chapter and type backslash latrine, open square brackets, lines equal 4, close square brackets, open curly brackets, a, close, and open and close and empty curly brackets. Lines equals 4 means that the initial will take the space of 4 lines and the letter between curly brackets will be the initial itself. In this case, the letter A. Let's recompile and see the result. That's fine. If you want to make the first couple of words in small caps, you just need to add them in the empty curly brackets. Let's do it right now. Recompile and see the results. It's already looking good. But before continuing, let's fix some details here. If you look at the header in the next page after the chapter, we have the chapter number and name. This is not looking good in here as well the page numbers up here in the page. To fix that, we need to add these comments in order. I'll leave it here in the screen so you can take a screenshot. Briefly, the use package Fancy HDR, Page Style Fancy and Fancy HF enable you to modify the header and the footer. Fancy Foot LE will put the page number in old style numbers at the bottom left of the even page and fancy foot RO will put the page number in old style numbers at the bottom right of the odd page. The last common renew common head rule with it will make the header ruler disappear. Hit recompile again. That's nice, our book is looking good. Most of the hard work is done. We just need to continue to add the other chapters and the book will take shape. Let me add two more chapters. Back in our manuscript, I'll copy and paste from the manuscript and find the beginning of each one of the chapters and add the chapter command as well the initial command. Once done, let's recompile. Do you see? It's like magic. The last thing to close this video, I'm gonna add the table of contents. We simply go over here before the chapter starts and add the following command. 
backslash table of contents and hit recompile. Now that's done, let me check the results. Here you have the table of contents with the chapters in their exact page number. Let's try if this is accurate. And there you have it. Fantastic! This is how your book should look after being printed. We did this only by typing 18 commands. You don't even need to memorize them. Just save it as a template for every book you want to format. Better yet, I'll leave it here in the description of the video for you to copy. You can add later the half title page, title and copyright. But I believe you have a pretty good formatted book to start. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe, like and comment. See you in the next video.